Hello the internet, welcome back to the Waifus, I'm Sefi, and today I want to talk a little bit about the before you play Sword of Combalaria, sort of going over the pet peeves that I have with the game or the bad aspects that I found while playing on the Taiwanese version. I've already made plenty of positive content about the game and how I feel about it, and in fact I am making a lot of guys not only on the channel but on my website, but I want to go also over the negatives that I've seen. Now before we go into the negatives, important, judge the game for yourself, you have to play a game for yourself, not believe what a random YouTuber tells you on their house, doesn't matter the size, if it's me or anyone else, just play the game for yourself, see if you like it. It's a free to play game, you only will waste 10 minutes downloading it, and then you can see on your own if you like it or not. That said, leave a like, subscribe, and let's get started with the pet peeves that I have for this game. So we can call this video probably a gacha review before you play Sword of Comalaria. So let's start with the point number one, and it's going to be personally for me the shop prices. I am a spender in most gacha games, so I like when they have good packs where I can get plenty of pools and it doesn't feel like I'm wasting a lot of money. Because okay, let's start with this is not an investment, this is wasting money on a hobby, right? Which is completely fine. But this game doesn't have a lot of those packs. So this is the one-time packs. There are three that are pretty good, the three initial packs. After that, the rest are not that good. There is no single pack here out of those three that will give you a single per dollar, a pool per dollar. When we go to the monthly packs, there's the same thing, right? Let's, uh, let's wait a second if it allows. You have the monthly card, which is good. You have the first offer right here. The second offer is already not a single per dollar. I think it's like $25 for 20 singles. Uh, same for this, same for this one right here. It's already more 50 bucks, I think, for like 30. So the offers the game has is not that great in comparison to other gadgets, even though there are some packs. Like these packs for me as a small spender are more than enough. I'm not going to be going crazy on this game outside of the first month, spending a little bit more, right? But I will say that's like the first thing, which is also offset by the amount of, of events we're getting, login calendars, extra rewards and freeze by the developers, which means you're getting more currency even as a free-to-play player. So that's pretty good, I will say. The second thing that bothers me a little bit, and this might uh, actually turn off a lot of people, is the gacha system itself. The gacha system is 180 pools or 200, I don't remember, please correct me, 180 pools, and then you will get the guaranteed character in there. The thing is, you are getting 50 to 70 pools per month, depending on the month. Five to seven multis, you can see as a full free-to-play, right? Which a lot of people will consider not enough. Now, the thing is, you can get a necessary guarantee every 100 pulls, you're guaranteed a random SSR. This is random, of course, this is not the guarantee on the banner, but still, you can be pretty lucky, right? So, for example, in my case, uh, as a full free-to-play in three weeks, I've gotten nine SSR characters, most of them being meta. We're talking about Tristan, Dantalion, Cole, Cocoa, uh, Inanna, uh, Maitha was for free, so I don't count her. And I also got now Lila, the new character. I got Hasna, the waifu, and then I got Momo, which I also like a lot. So again, you can get lucky, and this score will, of course, going to be based on RNG. But I will say that even with five to seven uh, moves per month, a lot of people are putting this as super low, when in reality, you will be getting plenty of characters. Because between what we get plus what the developers give us, you should be able to get at least a couple of SSRs per month. Yes, can you be super unlucky and get nothing? Of course, absolutely. In that case, you are getting one SSR every two months. Again, that is if you are like bottom of the barrel, lack RNG. I don't think there is anyone who will be that unlucky, okay? But again, it could happen, theoretically. So that is the second point. The third point is competitive content. Now, before we go into competitive content, competitive content, it's up to you. I don't care about competitive content, that's why it doesn't bother me, but I have to put it in this list, because a lot of people will also get turned down by this. Personally, I don't care. You will be able to get most of the PvP rewards just by doing your dailies on auto, without worrying about anything. But if you like tryharding and getting high ranks, of course, if you're a full free-to-play, it might be really, really hard. There is two competitive game modes right now. There is PvP and there is Tower of Adversity, where you actually can get a frame by being top 5%, uh, I believe if it's where you get the frame. Uh, don't, don't call me on that. You can go watch my previous video if you want to check the frame. So those two are the current competitive modes and there's also live PvP that they do from time to time. So far it's only been once and the reception was mixed. Some people like it, some people don't even care or don't do PvP. So I would say it's a 50-50 on that regard. In my opinion, as long as I can have fun, collect the most characters, lowest spender, that is what I care uh, for me on a gacha game. Having fun, collecting characters, team building. That's what I enjoy, account progression. So for me, I ignore PvP, doesn't bother me too much. Now the next point 
that I want to talk about is the actual PvE game mode. The PvE is thought that everyone talks about. The Spiral of Destinies. This right here is the current event. This is the normal Spiral. I have 19 keys. I'm going to be 100% honest. Sefi, is this something you can play a lot? Yes. This has literally... Uh, more than 10 endings, I believe, like a lot of different endings. So you'll be able to replay this a lot. The problem is, this is going to be the first month. When this is done, no one is going to be playing this game mode. People will just be doing their daily catch missions. And that's fine, because that's what a single player game should be. This is a single player game inside the gacha. So you'll be, you'll be able to come here, complete all of the different endings, have multiple hours of content and then when they add more stories and more events like right now for example we have the this one with the new alt for Rawija with Tristan and more characters is where you can keep playing if you only if you only like or you only care about the single player rather than the gacha but most people that are going to be playing this on a daily basis it's for the gacha aspect people i think are putting too much emphasis on the spiral of destinies when in reality long term unless you're a content creator or you're doing some sort of challenge you're not going to be playing that and then lastly something that i do not like and there is nothing in here that will change my mind is the banner schedule there is too many banners at any given point banners usually are like at a two week 2.5 weeks you can go and check on my website already i have all of the banners from the taiwanese version here on order if you want to see what's about to come now you can save and prepare since of course this is you know a game that will rerun most of the characters meta characters pretty often so you can plan ahead what you want to do uh, but it's something i don't like when the banners are so fast and we don't get enough currency in nikkei every two weeks we would also get in a banner uh, but i will say in nikkei it's only one character usually in here is sometimes four characters or two double banners will be at the same time in there right so that's like the thing that i like the least about the game but again i think this gets upset by how many pulls we're getting with events in the mail etc but a free to play might be tough for light spenders i think this game is going to be fantastic which is what i'm enjoying it all right now all that said i think those are the pet peeves that i have with the game and the negatives i think the positives outweigh the negatives there's only four things that i've mentioned in this video but I wanted to talk a little bit about this. And when this video is live, we might be re-rolling, we might be on a few hours. We're gonna be re-rolling until we get the perfect God account, all right? We're aiming for Gloria and Beryl or Cole, one of the two. So we need to get two multis, two SSRs. Pretty simple, back to back, 2%. <laughs> so if you wanna see that, we're gonna be live. You have the links, of course, on my channel and on Twitch as well. That's gonna be it for this one. Thank you to my patrons for making this content possible. Love you all, guys. Good luck with your pool data rates. I'll see you in the next one. Yakutatatsu are Rakuen Karatsui for Sirimon. Grant to Noir and Oshon Time with it. Finch Bambutsu Kirito are Koyu Kodavish.